let's talk about orifice plates. Um, I've been manufacturing orifice plates now for the past couple years and started out basically getting a local shop to shear aluminum plate for me into six inch squares and then I would fixture them up into my lathe and machine the holes. I've progressed over the last couple years into now getting my plates as a laser cut blank. Uh, this would be a raw plate as they come into me from my supplier and they already have the holes pre-punched so and the quarters rounded. You might see plates that are out there with square edges or sanded edges. They're still my plates, but I've evolved over the years. Probably the most popular set of plates that you see discussed uh, pretty much everywhere on the internet are the uh, pass-around plates. And these are the original pass-around plates here that were originally sent around through the forum, the Flowbench forum, to various flow benches around the uh, United States for guys to flow them. Nobody knew what they flowed. I was the only one that basically knew what they flowed. I machined them and we sent them out and created a mini database of the results to give everybody an idea of where their flow benches compared to other flow benches. After that experience everybody decided hey I want a set of those plates for myself so I was able to compare uh, my flow bench readings to somebody else's flow bench readings to somebody else's flow bench readings so it basically evolved into a set of three plates which are 100 CFM 200 CFM and 300 CFM and they're matched to this original set of plates that were sent around and you can now compare a flow bench in Germany to a flow bench in Australia to a flow bench in California, Michigan, or basically anywhere in the world using this set of plates you can compare your bench to somebody else's flow bench. I machine my plates to what's called a sharp edge and I'm not sure how this is going to show up on the camera but I'll give you an idea this edge right here is sharp and there's a 45 degree bevel on the back side. This plate is a square edge plate and you can see the difference. Sharp edge orifice plates do have a top and bottom. As you will see on the label it says this side towards airflow. Some of my earlier plates that are out there in the field uh, do not have that on the label. But in the intake mode, on top of the flow bench, the label will always face up. In exhaust mode, you flip the plate over and it faces down. Again, the airflow is coming towards the face of the plate and that's the way you want it. When it's inside the flow bench, it's exactly the same way. Label up on intake, label down in exhaust mode. Every plate that I supply out of my shop here will come with a label on the front that lists its flows at various depressions and CFM. If you're buying a set of the pass-around plates, for calibrating a flow bench you will probably just see a CFM and a depression number and you won't have an, the second number on the plate that you would see on a typical plate that I would supply for a PTS flow bench build. You can see the difference here's your CFM and your static and then here's another CFM and another static. The difference between these two is the number on the left at 28 inches is your calibration flow at that given depression when the plate is on top of your flow bench. Keep this in mind. That number is when it's on top of the flow bench. The other number 
at 16 inches more than likely is when the plate is inside your flow bench being used as a measuring orifice okay the differential pressure is 16 inches from the top chamber to the bottom chamber and you're measuring that flow across the plate it's kind of hard for people to grasp the concept as to what the difference is in that number. I, I have a lot of people ask me, well, I flowed that plate at 16 inches on top of the bench, and I'm like, no, no, no. That 16-inch number is your internal number. And I do it this way so that people don't have to buy multiple sets of orifice plates. So instead of having to buy 28-inch plates for on top of your bench for calibration plates and then another set of plates internally, I've worked out sets of plates that allow the same plate to work inside the cabinet or on top of the flow bench as a calibration plate. So instead of buying eight plates, you're only having to buy three plates or four plates or whatever we determine you need for your flow bench build. A typical flow bench build at 600 CFM, I recommend four plates. It gives you enough internal ranges and it gives you a good selection of calibration plates. You would basically put your largest plate inside your flow bench and then you would flow your next plate which on this one is a 500 CFM at 28 inches. Calibrate with that. Then you would put the next plate in, which is a 300 at 28, on top of your flow bench. Measure that one. And then you would lastly use the 100 CFM at 28 inches as an additional calibration plate. So now you've used three plates for that 600 CFM plate internally. And I will go into another video with delving into the calibration of a flow bench I get a lot of questions on on that and I think that's going to have to be a more extensive video explaining how all of your calibration comes into effect we using these different plates and using the uh, PTS digital manometer so that should give you a general idea of orifice plates uh, what they're for, how they work, and how they're used in a flow bench ap application. Uh, any more questions? Give me a call, send me an email, talk to me on the forum, and you can find additional information on the uh, flow bench forum. Thanks, have a good day.